best beer store in the West, with two stores at Shop 2, number 13, Adelphi Boulevard, Point Cook, and 78 Pier Street, Altona. Hopheads offers one of the widest selection of local and international craft beer in Victoria. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hopheads AU. Hopheads, we're here for beer. George's on Vista is the local bistro at Fraser Eyes in Caroline Springs, situated at the George Cross Soccer Club at City Vista Reserve. You can now get takeaway Thursday, Friday and Saturday nights between 5pm to 7.30pm. Phone your order through on 70210555 between those times or you can pre-order your meals by emailing info at georgiesonvista.com.au but orders must be received by 5pm on the day required. Get behind local business and order your next takeaway dinner from Georgie's on Vista. 46 City Vista Court, Fraser Rise in the heart of Caroline Springs. Good evening and a very warm welcome to you wherever you may be. Thank you for joining us here on the Football Fan Zone. It is episode 15 indeed it is. And um, tonight it's match day 10 of the Hotwoods Football IQ Quiz. And what a beauty it is going to be. The Battle of North Geelong and Sunbury United. And it is going to be an absolute humdinger. I'm sure enough going to use that word tonight. My name is Tonchi Prusak. I'm one of three co-hosts tonight, and uh, joining me very, very shortly will be my uh, second co-host and then my third co-host. Let's introduce, first of all, um, Steve uh, Curtin. There he is, having a quick swig of the drink. (laughs) How are we, Steve? How's things with you, my friend? Yeah, very, very well. Thanks, Tonchi. Just enjoying a weekend of nice weather and some late nights up watching uh, men ride bikes over mountains in France, which is always good to do uh, at this time of year. And that's uh, that was very exciting last night with uh, the yellow jersey changing hands on the uh, the final time trial there between the two Slovenians from Roglic to Pogacar. But it was exciting that we had an Aussie, Richie Port, the Tasman and getting on the podium in third. But the question is tonight, Tonchi, who's going to get the yellow jersey in the football IQ quiz brought to you by Hopheads? How are you doing, Tonch? I'm doing very well. It was a delightfully sunny day. Uh, fantastic. Spring is in the air. You know, hopefully with um, – I'm certainly down Geelong way, the, um, the restrictions easing. We hope, hope those restrictions start to ease down uh, Melbourne way and how things are down Melbourne way. Well, let's introduce our third co-host, Craig Filer. Craig, how are you, my friend? How's things with you? And you're getting rather excited because you're 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 moving into a new uh, new home, aren't you? Very shortly. Yeah, hopefully. Good evening, Jets. Uh, very well done there, Steve. I love the way you just put the yellow jersey straight back on the football at West. Mate, quality commentary that. Years of experience, that may. Yes, I'm oh, well. Are we putting in for a bonus? Yeah. All good. Yeah, no, we're um, hopefully moving into the property within within a month. Um, fingers crossed. So um, we were thinking at one stage that it may get delayed because of obviously everything that's gone on. But um, they're actually um, a couple of weeks ahead of schedule. So, um, yeah, really, really pleased with it. Went down. Um, no, I didn't. I mustn't say that. Apparently, it's looking very nice down there. So... <laughs> yeah, now, uh, um, Steve, getting back to the yellow jersey business. Now, is there an omen that if we look at the uh, Sunbury United logo, very predominantly yellow there, could that be a, a bit of a, 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 I guess, a hint of what may happen? Yes, well, they do wear the uh, the Maillot Jaune for their, their home games, the yellow jersey, but they are the away team tonight. So I'm not sure what their change troop is, but maybe, um, well, look, we'll see how we go. Uh, it's, a, it's a big clash with uh, North Geelong. Anthony Banavart's last time getting nine questions right out of the 10, which is the uh, the best we've had so far, uh, strike weight wise. So, um, yeah, Joel's got some tough uh, competition tonight, but Joel also did very well in his first round match as well. So it's exciting to see uh, two uh, young gentlemen who know a lot about their football. Now, Craig, on Thursday night, we had the Gospich Bears defeat Bowen Soccer Club 10-8. Um, a bit of banter there, a bit of, a, um, bit of um, entertainment. Can we expect more of the same tonight? 
No, I don't think so. I think they're both, uh, I think they're both pretty uh, pretty laid back characters uh, with uh, with Banner and uh, and Gretchy. Um, so I don't think there will be. Uh, I don't think they. I'd like to see it. I'd like to see some banter because I think it, it adds to the it adds to the show. And uh, obviously, um, the the Gosbridge Bears and uh, Melbourne Melbourne uh, Knights a couple of weeks ago was uh, was the top. And uh, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Marco uh, Butarach uh, continued it when he was uh, trying to get into the head of uh, young Jordan from Darwin and it uh, from Darwin from Barwin sorry Barwin from Darwin there's a big difference there <laughs> and, it, and it clearly worked so um, no I don't think so I think it but I think it will be a very very good um, a very good contest tonight yeah Joel Joel was wasn't getting sucked into anything there on Thursday night but it was a very very entertaining rubber Gosbridge Bears the first team to progress through to the semi finals. And uh, Steve, as we look at the fixtures there, North Geelong Warriors obviously taking on Sunbury United tonight. But then we've got two more games to round out the quarterfinals. That's right. Coming up uh, on uh, Thursday, the 24th of September, it's Brimbank Stallions and St. Albans Saints. And then Sunday, the 27th of September, Sebastopol Vikings and Yarraville Glory. Looking forward to those two encounters. Yeah, it should be fantastic. Can't, cannot wait for those games, but uh, it will be very, very interesting. Chance, we've got the news desk, and then after that, we've got the uh, tonight's big clash between the Warriors and Sunbury United. So um, I'll, I'll let you guys step away from the uh, microphone and prepare yourselves for the news desk coming up very, very shortly. Folks, don't go away. It's match day 10, quarterfinal two action, North Geelong versus Sunbury United. Hang around for the news desk. Lots and lots of interesting stuff happening in the last few hours, in the last 24 hours indeed. Good evening and welcome to the News Desk on Sunday, the 20th of September 2020. And we'll start tonight in the West, where on Friday, Western United announced the exciting details surrounding their new training facility adjacent to the new Wyndham Stadium. The facility will include a main grass pitch with 5,000 seats to serve as a training base for all United's A-League uh, team and future W League and girls and boys academy teams. A second grass pitch and third synthetic pitch will primarily be for community use, building on the club's connection with footballers and a broader community of the West. The facility will be jointly funded and developed by Wyndham City and the Western Melbourne Group. And West United will share the facilities with the broader Wyndham community. So some exciting news there that was teaser came out from uh steve horvat the uh operations manager there on uh thursday on twitter and we were waiting to see what it might be and uh yes it turns out that the uh the go-ahead is uh been granted for this new facility so pretty exciting guys would you say craig yeah absolutely it's fantastic for the west i mean if you've uh uh, I'm not sure whether Tonch has got the uh, the plans there, but um, the, no. the design of the the actual uh, facility looks absolutely fantastic. And um, you know, if it's going to be opened up to the community as well to to be able to use those facilities, uh, what a great what a great opportunity is for for football in the West. And um, fair play to Wyndham Council. I live in Wyndham, and uh, they've they've certainly um, they've so they put their uh, their money where their mouths are in terms of Western United, and they're certainly uh, helping them as much as they possibly can. So uh, it's fantastic for not only the West, but it's it's fantastic for football in general. Yeah, they're talking about possibly that the uh, that the whole um, facility may be up and running by 2023. Um, construction is expected to start next year in 2021. I guess the um, downside of that is because of all the COVID. Um, pandemic that we find ourselves in, everything has been pushed to back a year. So when um, originally the, the club was hopeful, hopeful of being up and running, oh, the facility being up and running by 2022, it has now been pushed out to 2023. Um, Craig, your thoughts, how's that going to affect in the short term, you know, um, what they're trying to build as far as, you know, both a community, a culture, um, you know, a, a venue that they can call a home, at least temporary. Yeah, look, I think everybody's um, everybody wants everything now, and um, you know, if you just go back again, we're twenty months from when Western United started, so you know the fact that they haven't got their ground, everybody knew that, uh, and everybody was aware of that well before they uh, they got their license that it wasn't going to happen. So, you know, things things take time. Um, this is the step. This is the first step forward to having that that big plan that Western United keep talking about of you know um, all in one 
uh, cumbersome of, of focusing in on everything in in one venue. Um, so is it going to be? It's going to be fantastic for the West, isn't oh, it? Absolutely, you know, it's going to be brilliant. You know, to have three yeah. state of the art pitches, a stadium for five thousand people. Now, whether that can be used for for A League matches, um, I'm not sure. But they are going to um, they are going to use the facility as well for um, for other sports, not just uh, not just uh, soccer or football. Uh, they are making it into a rectangular, so it'll be used by uh, rugby union, I believe, and and some other sports. So um, no, it's great. Great, fantastic. Absolutely. Will will this, Steve, have a bit of a slow effect, or, or should I say, uh, a temporary sort of slowing down of, um, uh, you know, a youth league team, a W league team, um, that the fact that they don't have their own permanent ground until 2023? Will, will, what, what's your thoughts? Will that have an effect on it? I'd like to hope that it doesn't have any effect. They've got good facilities where they've been operating out of at uh, City Vista there, and you'd think that those facilities yeah, can accommodate the absolutely. extra training requirements yeah. of that. And then there is certainly enough stadiums around uh, Melbourne, Geelong, and so forth that they can yeah. some, find somewhere to uh, play if they are granted a W League licence or a, a National uh, Youth League licence. And uh, let's hope that happens sooner rather than later. Absolutely. Great point. And, um, yeah, it certainly would love to see that. Craig up and running, certainly a women's team before 2022 when we have the World Cup. But uh, um, yeah, yeah de definitely what Steve says makes uh, quite a fair bit of sense. Yeah, yeah it's in their, um, it, we know it's in their um, <laughs> ideas to get the girls, the women's team up as soon as they possibly can. And again, it's, you know, it's it's a marathon, not a sprint. They want to be there for the for the long term. So things things don't just happen overnight. There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that have to have to go on. You know, even the stadium, uh, when they had the um, the open forum on the the fans open forum the other week when they were in Sydney, um, the guy that was designing the stadium uh, was talking, and it's not as easy as just here's the plans, guys. Can we go and build? There's all the infrastructure that had to go behind that with the houses and, and everything else that's being built in Tarni. So um, it'll happen when it happens. But as Steve said, I think well, there's enough facilities around in terms of uh, for match day, you know, whether it's uh, Melbourne Knight Stadium, whether it's the GMBH Stadium, A Stadium, whether it's Ballarat um, or whether it's the um, the uh, Witten Oval. Um, there's plenty of grounds available for the next year or so to uh, to play the games. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Steve, other things that are happening behind the scenes as well. Um, the championship partner group, AAFC, um, we've got five new additions to the squad. Yeah, so the panel met last uh, last Thursday night, actually, and they've added, yeah, five new members to that uh, advisory group and three of them are Victorian. So those five new clubs, as we tipped on the show last Thursday night, one of them is Sunshine Coast, the other four, Altona Magic, Canberra, Croatia, Oakley, Cannons and Dandenong Thunder. The next meeting there is to be held sometime within the next week. Fantastic. Um, so the, 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 it's growing. It's becoming a lot more serious. Um, that's something we've talked about on Thursday's show. Certainly we would love to see that um, come to fruition. Um, Craig, any thoughts before we move on? Yeah, no, it's going to, it's going to come down to, it's going to come down to a number of things, isn't it? Facilities, you know, management, yeah, money will obviously come into there. Um, I would imagine that um, the historical side of, of, of the clubs will, will also be involved. But it's really interesting that, you know, there has been a, a plan that's been, um, I wouldn't say it's been announced, but there's certainly a plan um, in place for, for how it all, um, how it all goes together. So, um, you know, it'll be really interesting over the next, uh, you know, six months, seven months, um, when the final uh, proposal is presented to the FFA, um, there will be a number of consultancy uh, meetings during during that time, um, but it's uh, it's you know it starts now. Uh, consultant with the FFA in September, uh, October there'll be a club uh, capability study. So that will mm -hmm. go to you know all the things that we've 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 mentioned. You know facilities, um, you know staff. Um, I believe that you know a number of um, uh, full time staff will have to be employed at the clubs, and uh, then there'll be a major group meeting, um, an interim report. Uh, consultancy again with the FFA, um, another working group party, um, and it goes on and on until the final report is done in uh, end of March um, and then uh, presented to the FFA um, for in, in April. So, you know, it's uh, it's about all these clubs coming together, coming up with ideas, putting the plan and proposals together, and then obviously presenting it to the FFA, who ultimately have the final say, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it'll be very interesting. It'll be really interesting, Steve. I mean, apart from the formation of this new second division, who's going to run it? Who's going to actually choose the teams? Is it going to be independent? Is it going to be run by a consortium of the leagues as well? 
all of those things need to be nutted out. And um, it's not like you can really follow um, any other, uh, I guess, formula at the moment because even the A-League at the moment is trying to um, uh, divorce itself from Football Federation Australia. But it's it's not going as smoothly as, as everyone, I suppose, expected, because, not to mention the um, current financial climate, which has resulted in um, um, the, the TV rights being just totally, well, halved. But, um, yeah, it's, it's not, not so straightforward, is it? No, it's definitely not. And I guess that moves on to our next point about the uh, PFA co-chief executive, Bo Bush, making a statement that we just found online around three hours ago. And it says, talks remain ongoing with the clubs in an effort to reach a new collective bargaining agreement. Attempts to pressure players through threats and misleading commentary is unhelpful, damaging, particularly while the players continue to work in good faith to reach a solution. So that one, this situation just keeps on uh, dragging out a bit longer than um, it was initially rumoured to. So, And I don't see this one wrapping up anytime soon either, actually, as it stands. Yeah. So, And we're also in that situation where we don't know exactly when the next season will start. Whether Will it be December? Will it not be until January? Uh, we still don't know the answer to that one. Yeah, no, a lot of lot of unknowns happening, that's for sure. Now, finally, we've got some uh, overnight scores and uh, results from the... Uh, EPL there, Craig. Any, uh, any, uh, do you want to go through some of those scores? Yeah, so we'll start off at the top. It's uh, nice and easy, then, isn't it? So, uh, Everton five, uh, West Bromwich Albion two. Your mate, um, got sent off in that one, Tonch. Um, the coach, yeah, he did. Oh, what's really? What's your West, West, West Bromwich Sla Slavin Village in the, in the uh, yeah. got in sent the crowd. Time for berating the referee over a, um, a red card, which was, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what the problem was, to be fair. He, he poached, but he poached. Well, whether he punched, whether he pushed, it doesn't matter. You can't leave, raise your hands in football. And I've got a red card right on half time and it incensed uh, Billich and uh, he got sent off as well. But um, Everton five, obviously West Brom two. Um, Everton go top of the league after that result. Um, Manchester United won Crystal Palace three. Probably, um, I'd say it's probably the shock of the weekend. Yeah. Manchester United going down at home 3-1. Um, and I have to say they were abysmal. I've watched it this afternoon. Um, you know, if uh, Harry Maguire is the most expensive centre-back in the world football, then my dog is going training next week because I reckon she would do a great job. At that. Well, she's, she's got her own Instagram page. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Harry Maguire, he's just, my, seriously, my nose runs faster than him. By the way, we're not talking about Harry, Harry, Maguire, Harry Maguire, but we're talking about um, your doggy. What's your dog called? What's... Muffin, Muffy, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to back to back to proper stuff. Yeah, um, <laughs> losing three one at home to uh, to Crystal Palace, and uh, Crystal Palace thoroughly deserve that win. Um, Leeds United um, get their first win back in the Premiership, beating Fulham four three. Um, Jeez, they are scoring goals, aren't they? Yeah, and my, conceding goals as well. Yeah, that's my big problem for them. I think Bielsa's way of playing football is we'll just, it'll be like Newcastle under Kevin Keegan. Uh -huh. We'll just go out, we'll score more goals than the opposition. And that's, I think that's the way he, he wants to play. And that's all very well, but you're playing in the biggest and the hardest league in the world. So um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure it'll work every week, to be fair. Your thoughts? Well, um, he's, they, they they definitely are a um, um, an entertaining team to watch. I did see some hot some of the highlights, and and yeah, all guns blazing right from the outset. They came out firing from from the from the outset. Um, yeah, you're right. It's it, um, what what's the old saying? Defenses win championships. You know, um, as, as as good as it is to be scoring goals. I mean, that's what now they've got a goal four against record of eight eight. V8. Well, man, I think man. their motto is uh, attack is the best form of defence at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, absolutely right, Craig. I think um, how long can that last for? Yeah, Maxi Santec has just posted up now the three uh, newly promoted clubs have conceded 22 goals in the opening two weeks. So, um, you know, that tells you a story. But, um, look, Leeds are very, very good value going forward and fantastic to watch. My big concern for them is uh, is at the back and they can't keep uh, conceding as many goals as they do um, in the first two games. Um, Arsenal um, in the um, in the London derby defeated um, uh, West Ham 2-1. Um, and they seem to be going on a, a, a nice bit of a, um, a run now under Mikel Arteta. Seems to have got them playing some nice football, of course. Uh, Pierre uh, Abba, Abamyang um, signed a new deal with them last week, which was huge for the club, I believe. And, um, you know, that sort of settled everybody down there. But um, I think they'll be all right this year, Arsenal. I don't think they'll, uh, they'll win it. But I think, you know, that top four um, 
top four of the league will be very, very, uh, very tough this year. Mm. They didn't have it all their own way, they did they? Eddie no, they didn't. and Ketty are scoring that winner only in the 85th minute, so they only just just got over the line late in the game there, Arsenal. So, but that's that's when they're at their best when they do win those narrow ones, I suppose, Arsenal. So um, they might have been tipped to win by a few more though. Yeah, uh, yeah, and we go on to the games over the uh, over the next day. We've got obviously Spurs and Southampton. That'll be a, a nice one. Gareth Bale coming back to uh, Tottenham, playing against the uh, the club where it all started for him as a as a very young junior. Um, and a little bit of a story here regarding Gareth Bale and, and Southampton was um, they were actually going to get rid of um, Gareth Bale at the age of twelve. Um, he wasn't a training for about three weeks. Um, and when he, when he went back to train and they called him into the office and they were going to get rid of him. But his father told them that he'd been very ill and they kept him on. And the rest is... Uh, rest there is you him. go. So, um, so that'll be really interesting. What do you make of that signing? Uh, well, I don't know if it's a surprise or what, but yeah, I mean, as, as, a, as a Welshman, it would be... Remiss of you not to uh, give us a bit of backstory about the Gareth Bale uh, move back to Spurs. <laughs> Look, I think it's. I think it's. Um, you know, he's thirty-one years old. He hasn't played. He played twenty-two games last year. Um, it was. He, he wasn't going to stay there again. You know, he's he's uh, he's made his point. Um, you know, you you can't, you can't. I suppose clubs are players have always been guilty of uh, having the uh, the upper hand on clubs. Uh, but I think what he's done at at at, at uh, Real Madrid is is absolutely what no most people would do in in life. They just sit there and say, "Okay, you're not going to play me. I ain't going anywhere. I'm on a contract. You've got to pay me up." Um, but at yeah. 31 years old, you're coming to the end of your career. You want to play mm. football, so you know I think it's a good move for him. It's a great move for Tottenham uh, going back to. You know, I suppose where, where where he left a few years ago. Um, and we'll see we'll see what happens. It's see how Mourinho um, how he plays him. I think he's going to have to be very mindful of how often he plays him, where he plays him. Um, you know, as it, as it, as has been very well documented. You know, he played Harry Kane last year, and so did um, the previous coach when he was injured and probably shouldn't have played him. Mm. And I think that you know you 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 have to sort of take that into consideration now because if he if he goes there and he gets injured, he could be out for six eight weeks. You know, he hasn't played a lot of football, so I think it's just managing him and and give him you know the right amount of minutes at the right time and, and protect him as much as we as he can. Moving along, um, Newcastle take on Brighton tonight, eleven p.m. Then Chelsea and Liverpool big clash at one thirty a.m. tomorrow morning, and that'll be followed by Leicester City and Burnley. And then on Tuesday, early Tuesday morning, Aston Villa take on Sheffield United. And then Wolves coming up against Man City as well. So uh, some good, interesting games happening there in the EPL, no doubt. So uh, lots to look forward to. Gentlemen, as far as looking forward to, well, we've got a big clash ourselves on tonight. Yes, the outdoor season may not have happened, but um, uh, our Hop Heads Football IQ quiz is now getting into the um, business end of the season. And I'll let you guys step away from the uh, microphone and get yourselves ready for tonight's big clash. And um, in the meantime, we are going to listen to a couple of uh, messages from our um, sponsors. And um, don't go away, folks, because after the the, um, the 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 messages from our sponsors, it's all about match day ten, quarterfinal two, quarterfinal clash number two, North Geelong versus Sunbury United. Don't go away. The best beer store in the West, with two stores at. Shop 2, number 13, Adelphi Boulevard, Point Cook, and 78 Pier Street, Altona. Hopheads offers one of the widest selection of local and international craft beer in Victoria. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at HopheadsAU. Hopheads, we're here for beer. George's on Vista is the local bistro at Fraser Eyes in Caroline Springs, situated at the George Cross Soccer Club at City Vista Reserve. With the current COVID-19 pandemic, we've adjusted our menu and our business times. You can now get takeaway Friday and Saturday nights between 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. You can phone your order through on 7021 Friday and Saturday nights between those times, or you can pre-order your meals by emailing info at georgiesonvista.com.au. But orders must be received by 5 p.m. on the day required. Check out our full menu and weekly specials on our website georgiesonvista.com.au Get behind local business and order your next takeaway dinner from Georgie's on Vista. 46 City Vista Court, Fraser Rise, in the heart of Caroline Springs.
Welcome back. If you've just joined us, it's the Hopheads Football IQ Quiz. We are into the quarterfinals. This is the second quarterfinal tonight. It's North Geelong coming up against Sunbury United. Anthony Bonavarts against Joel Gretsch. Both of them did exemplary in the first round. And it's time now to welcome our first contestant, the defender from Elko Park. Here he is, Anthony Banavarts. A very warm welcome to you from us here at the Football Out West show. And he's looking very splendid in the club kit there. He's got the away jersey on. How you doing, mate? Yeah, very well. Thank you very well. And I must say, I do appreciate the pronunciation of the surname as well, Steve. Done very well with it. Well, I got a bit of flack for the pronunciation during some of your games on the uh, on the streams with uh, Football Victoria. So I've tried to lift my, lift my game a little bit, as I'm, I'm sure you and uh, Joel will be doing tonight as well. Hope so. <laughs> All right, uh, Craig's on mute there, I think. So, should we let yeah, him speak, or should we? That you actually said defender, did you say? Yeah. Uh, yes. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to get that right. <laughs> but, uh, I have seen <laughs> him. Do, I have seen him doing a bit of work in the opposition's penalty box at Elko Park as well. So. Uh, that's always good to see the, the defenders getting forward and getting involved in the attack. Now, let's go to Sunbury United, and it's a very warm welcome to the Hopheads Football IQ quiz to Mr. Joel Gresh. Joel, welcome, and how are you doing? I'm good, guys. How are you? Very uh, very well, thanks. Are you feeling um, nervous tonight, confident, a mixture of both? Oh, it's a mixture of both tonight. I think it would be um, a bit more of a challenge than last week, which is, um, which is good. So it's something to look forward to. Yeah, don't let him don't let him put you off that he scored nine last last time, mind. It was a complete fluke. He's done no <laughs> training. He's done no training since. So uh just I uh, I fancy your chances tonight, Joel. Let's see. Oh, we'll see. We'll see how we go. Very cool. good, very good. All right. Well, we are already nearly at 7:30. So we'll just get into the uh the rules again if you if you need to uh just quickly run through them. I believe Craig, 10 seconds per answer to uh, deliver your answer. No brains trust, no no Googling, and uh, beware of the psych outs from the quiz master. And there will be an extra uh, opportunity, guys. I will offer one question over to the opposition if he gets it wrong. So just be beware of that and make sure you obviously concentrate at all times. So we'll get into it, Steve, shall we? Do you want to do the toss of the coin? Yep, I've actually got the coin here tonight. So, Joel, you're going to get the call. It's going to be heads or tails, and then it's going to be your choice what you want to do first. We'll go ahead. And we have a tails there. So, Anthony, would you like to fire first or would you like to send Joel in? I'll send Joel in. Okay. All right. So, Joel will get the A questions tonight. Anthony will get the B set of questions. So, that's all locked in now. The all-important uh, question allocation. So, Joel will be limbering up to take the first uh, spot kick here, so to speak, tonight with question one as team a and there it is you're underway there joel okay joel good luck for this evening which victorian club was formed in 1953 under the name wilhelmina was it a croydon city arrows b ringwood city c nana wadding city or d doncaster rovers um you have got 10 seconds so don't rush around yeah i think it is ringwood i think I'm locking Ringwood. Ringwood City. Is he going to get on the board with his first question? He absolutely is. Ringwood City were founded by Dutch Australians as Wilhelmina in 1953. They play at Jubilee Park, currently compete in State League 4 East. It's a great start there from uh, Joel and uh, Sunbury United. Good start there. And that club also featured on the Optus uh, Football Belongs series, which has been a feature of uh, some really good content this year, as did uh, North Geelong as well. And now we go over to North Geelong, and it's question one for Anthony. Okay, Anthony. 2014 saw the first season of MPL Victoria, having replaced the previous Victorian Premier League. With no finals conducted, who finished top and were crowned premiers that year? Was it A, Preston Lions? B, Oakley Cannons, C, Bentley Greens, or D, South Melbourne? Uh, I believe it was the Oceania Club of the Century, as they'll tell you they are. D, South Melbourne. South Melbourne, you've locked that in. Is he correct? He absolutely is. The f former NSL side finished uh, first to edge out rivals Oakley Cannons, who finished in second place in 2014. 
So after two que a question each, we're 100%. Uh, Steve. Yeah, confident start by both of the guys, but there will be some harder questions coming up as we progress through the uh, the next nine questions each. So it's back over to Joel to see if he can double his tally with question two. Okay, Joel. On the 11th of April 2001, the Socceroos defeated American Samoa in a World Cup qualifying record score of 31-0. Where was that match played? Was it A, Honiara, B, Canberra, C, Coffs Harbour or D Newcastle. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but I'll take a guess and say Canberra. I'll lock in B Canberra. You're going to lock in B Canberra. That's is, correct. Is it correct? No. 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 Coffs yeah. Harbour. It was Coffs Harbour in uh, in the world record scoring feat at the Coffs Harbour International Stadium. Archie Thompson also scored an individual record of thirteen goals. Why David Zrelich netted eight. There you have it. There you go. Coffs okay. Harbour. Go. Never forget that, will you? <laughs> no, I won't. No. Ah, there we go. <laughs> so it's the Question first spot on the co coffee book. Now over to Anthony. Okay, Banner. Who scored? Oh, sorry, who was the top scorer for Australia in the 2010 World Cup in South Africa? Was it A, Tim K Cahill, B, Brett Holman, C, Harry Kuehl, or D, Josh Kennedy? Uh, I'm going to go with A, Tim Cahill. You're going to go with A, Tim Cahill. Is he correct? <laughs> No, he's not. It was B, Brett Holman. Brett Holman scored against Ghana in the 1-1 draw in Rustenburg and came off the bench to score in Australia's 2-1 win over Serbia. Tim Cahill scored Australia's only other goal in the same match. So, after two questions, Steve, we're still locked at one all. That's right. It's neck and neck. So, let's go to question three and see how the guys fare. Okay. Question number three for Joel. Which player went down in history books for scoring the final goal in the National Soccer League? Was it A, Ante Milicic, B, Damian Mori, C, Nick Bradger, and D, Bobby Despotovsky? Oh, that's a tough one. And here's the um, one we are going to hand over if you get it wrong. So uh, keep thinking there in the background, uh, Anthony. I'm going to just guess, and I'll go with D, Bobby Despotovsky. Say it again. Uh, I'll go with D. Is it Bobby Despotovsky? Good lad. Is he correct? Yeah. <laughs> no, he's not. We're going to hand that over to Banner for an opportunity to steal his point. Banner, who do you think? Um, it is? I don't think Damien Mori was still playing by the final season of, of the NSL. So it's either A or C. Um, Wild guess. I'm going to go with C, Nick Merger. You're going to go with C, Nick Merger. Is he correct for one point? He absolutely is. He steals that one point. On the 4th of April in 2004, Nick scored the decisive goal in the 98th minute of the NSL Grand Final to ensure Perth Glory were champions with a 1-0 win over Parramatta Power at the old Parramatta Stadium. This kick became the final action of the bygone competition. So, unfortunately for Joel, Banner was... picked up a point. Sorry, but Joel. No, nah, you're fine. No, nah, that was a tough one. So that was um, tough um, one. yeah. Yeah, well, just uh, just listen to the next question because it's going to be exactly the same. So if, maybe if, he can uh, steal it back. Yeah. If Banner gets it wrong, it comes straight over to you. So yeah. question number three for Ge North Geelong, and it's the Australia Cup competition existed as a national knockout tournament from 1962 to 1968 which club was the most successful in the australia in, in the australia cup's short history was it a george cross b apia Leichhardt, c melbourne hungary or d sydney hakoa your 10 seconds start now Great. It was about 30 years before I was born. Um, this is my era. Um, I know George Cross won at least one because they had uh, 
um, they, they won it. They, sorry, they found the cup recently. They posted it on Facebook. So I'm just going to, I know they won one, so I'm just going to go with A, George Cross. You're going to go with George Cross. Is he correct? No. 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 For one point, hand it over to Joel. Oh, I wouldn't have a clue either, but I'm going to have a guess and say Arpia Leichhardt. Arpia Leichhardt to get that point back that he lost. Is he correct? <coughs> no, he's not. It was Cindy, Sydney Hakoa. Sydney with the wins in 1965 and 1968 led the way with two title wins uh, before the competition was disbanded. The cup itself disappeared for decades, only to be discovered in a rubbish skip in 2011 by builders who were carrying it renovations at the Sydney Clubhouse. FFA chairman Chris Nicko attended the Caroline Springs George Cross versus Preston Lion game last August and left the trophy uh, there for safekeeping of the George Cross administration. Thank you, Stato, for that bit of information. That's good. Well, actually, uh, Anthony had already picked up that bit of information, or at least um, a good portion of it. So, um, one step ahead of us, perhaps. Um, now we just take a little bit of a pause here after three questions, where uh, Anthony's leading uh, two two points to one over Joel, and we'll just go to you, Anthony. And look, let's have a bit of a chat about your football, I guess, fandom at the moment. Who are you following? What teams are you watching uh, across the across the globe at the moment? And who do you hope wins their respective domestic titles? Very, very excited about uh, AC Milan. Um, Fame Shamrock Rovers in the Europa <laughs> League on Friday morning. Um, bit of a bit of a drop from winning Champions League to, to playing away in Ireland, but doing win nonetheless. And yeah, excited for excited for AC Milan in the Serie A season which started last night. Do you think they can push Juve this year? Um, I don't have to push Juve as, as a title. And I think it's win the league. So maybe that's a bit of a controversial statement, but yeah, I think it'll be between Inter and UA, and then Milan probably in third. Okay, well, it could be a couple of big Milan derbies coming up this year. Now, over the with the same question to you, Joel, who are you following at the moment? Are you? A, is it true that you're a Man United fan? Uh, yes, unfortunately, I am. And um, <laughs> this morning's um, <laughs> probably bad timing. This question, yeah, sorry, very bad timing. Um, unfortunately, didn't um, our first game wasn't um, wasn't to be, but I don't think that was. Um, that, I don't think that penalty should have been retaken. Yeah, okay. Well, um, and let's go on another note. Um, Van der Beek, the new signing, getting on the score sheet on his uh, debut yep. in the EPL. Happy with that? That's a bit of a positive. Yeah, that was a positive. So hopefully he can um, spark something and we um, next week we'll hopefully get one on the board. But yeah, so it's not, not good times at the moment, but we'll see how we go. So yep. there's, um, hopefully there's good things to come. As a Man United supporter there, Joel, are you frustrated? Sorry, Steve. Are you frustrated with the lack of um, signings that Manchester United haven't made this year? Yeah, I mean, compared to, obviously, you know, you see Liverpool signing players, Tottenham signing players. Um, it's frustrating because, you know, the, the players that we're looking at bringing in, the names they have, they're nowhere near, near close enough to, you know, the, like, Alcantara, you know, and... You know, hopefully there's we do bring in players, but it is frustrating because, you know, you see Liverpool just getting better and better with the players they bring in and then we're just falling behind. And But it is what it is. And, I mean, the owners, I mean, I've wanted them to go for a long time, and but it is what it is. So hopefully they can help Ollie and help him spend. But at the moment... So if, uh, if Ollie's actually listening to the show, and I know he listens in now and again... Yes, they're definitely after a few uh, defenders. So the two guys that are in front of me, you'd step up, wouldn't you? Surely you're better than Harry Maguire, aren't you? Oh, surely better than Harry Maguire. How is he worth what he's worth? I've no, nah, it frustrates me. Banner, Joel, I'll take a tenth of his wages, and I'm sure I'd do a better job. Yeah, I'd but defending this wages one, on it. On on that, that, that was atrocious. <laughs> But he does it every week. <laughs> not, not as if it's like once in a blue moon. Uh, he does it week in, week out. Week in, week out, yeah. And he's he just, turns like a semi-trailer. Yeah, my, I said earlier on, my nose runs faster. <laughs> my nose runs faster than him. <laughs> no? All right, Sorry, well, Steve. There, there we go. And as a as a Foxes fan, I'm pretty happy with the uh, the 80 million pound transfer fee that we received for Harry. So uh, thank you to... Uh, Everyone at Old Trafford for that one. Now, let's go on to uh, question four here for uh, for Joel, and let's see if he can uh, draw a level here at two all as we head in towards half time. Okay. 
and we'll have that question on the screen for you just in a moment. And it's coming up now for Joel Gretsch of Sunbury. Okay, question four. Which nation effectively forfeited 1998 World Cup qualifier by not turning up for the match, only to have FIFA's executive committee later allow the match to, reske to be rescheduled and take place at a later date? Is it A, Scotland, B, Estonia, C, Morocco, or D, Cameroon? Your 10 seconds start now. Another one that I'm just going to have to take a guess at. Um... I'm just going to go with A, Scotland. Now, I remember that game back from the days in the UK, um, and there was uproar. Now, if you'd said Scotland, uh, sorry, if you'd said Estonia, you'd have been correct because it was <coughs> Estonia that actually forfeited. The match was abandoned after three seconds because the Estonian team were absent from the uh, stadium in Tallinn due to a dispute over its floodlights. Scotland expected to be awarded a walkover victory, but FIFA ordered the match to be replayed on a neutral territory. They replayed the match, stayed at the Stade Louis uh, II in Monaco, and it ended in a goalless draw. So Scotland for Joel, and unfortunately, that's the yep. wrong answer. Apparently, the Scotland fans turned up and chanted only one team in Tallinn <laughs> on that particular night. But uh, also, Mark Poom was in goal in that nil-all draw that they played in Monaco and ended up resulting in him getting signed to play for Derby County in the EPL. There you go. I think he used to like to keep wearing tracksuit pants as well, which is always a good fashion statement. Now, let's go over to Anthony for his question four. Okay, um, which country's national team helped secure a truce to the na nation's civil war in 2007? Was it A, Ivory Coast, B, L Libya, C, Congo, or D, Somalia? Right, these questions are brutal. Um, what are the finals uh, now, Anthony? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this is going to be a guess. I've already got more wrong this time than last time. <laughs> um, I don't think the civil war in my coast, at least not recently. Um, Libya, Libya's a pretty pretty crazy player. I'll go with Libya, B. You're going to go with Libya. There's no point on offer, but what would you say, Joel? I think I would have went D, Somalia. You'd have gone for Saab, Somalia. <coughs> and you'd have both been wrong. It's Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast national team helped reduce tensions oh. between government and rebel forces playing in an African nations, a Cup of Nations qualifier in the rebel capital of Burk rather than Adijan. On an occasion uh, that brought both armies together peacefully for the first time, the Elephants defeated Madagascar 5 0 with Didier Drogba netting the fifth goal. So they are brutal, yes, but the cream yeah. always rises to the top. Uh, Anthony, doesn't it? Is that is that the saying? Oh, I'm just going to say that I'm in the lead at this point. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right. Question number five. Before we have a bit of a break again and some adverts, uh, it's a picture quiz. Which European club is represented by this logo, Joel? Is it A. Ludogorets, B. Ferin Verin Schwaros, C. Bohemians 1905, or D. M. S. K. Zelina? Oh my god, I've never seen that ever. So another guess, I'm gonna go see Bohemians nineteen oh five. Hopefully. <laughs> a point. Anthony, what would you have gone for? Yeah, yeah, he's correct, it's say. He is correct. He is correct. Like a great guess. Bohemians from the Czech capital have the kangaroos nickname in nineteen twenty seven. Australian football officials were looking for a European club to come and tour, come up come and tour. They decided on the Czechoslovakia and approached Slavia Prague and Victoria Ziskov, who both declined AFK. Are you taking the mickey, Steve? Well, that's why they changed the name, because they didn't think that the Australian community would be able to understand it. So they changed the name and ended up with a kangaroo and a logo, and they toured and played a number of games down under. There we go. There's another there you go. Okay. <laughs> It's a popular logo, that one, the green kangaroo. Okay, let's go to question five for Anthony. Last question before the commercial break. Okay, it's another um, a logo. Which Eastern Asian club is represented by this logo? <coughs> Excuse me. Is it A, Busan Eye Park, B, Jumbuk Motors, C, Guangzhou Evergrande, or D, Gamba Osaka? Uh, Process of elimination. Any, it's not getting any easier. 
Okay. I think it's B, and so either A or B. Um, I'm going to go with A, Boost Fun. Sorry, who are you going with, sorry? A, A Boost Fun, Hyde Park. Hyde Park, yes? Yeah. Is he correct? <laughs> He is. It is the uh, Goosan Air I Park. The club was one of the five ori- original five members of the K League and continues competed in the first division from 1983 to 2015 when they were relegated. Initially, the club was simply called Dayu in reference to the company who originally owned and financed it, or Dayu. Daewoo, the uh, the car manufacturer. Yeah. Okay, so we have uh, 100% strike rate on the logos tonight as we move into our little pause for a word from our sponsors. It is currently Anthony on three and Joel on two. The best, the best beer store, store in the West two with two stores, stores at, at Shop Shop number 13 Adelphi Boulevard, Point Cook, and 78 Pier Street, Alterna. Hopheads offers one of the widest selection of local and international craft beer in Victoria. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hopheads AU. Hopheads, we're here for beer. George's on Vista is the local bistro at Fraser Eyes in Caroline Springs, situated at the George Cross Soccer Club at City Vista Reserve. With the current COVID-19 pandemic, we've adjusted our menu and our business times. You can now get takeaway Friday and Saturday nights between 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. You can phone your order through on 70210 Friday and Saturday nights between those times, or you can pre-order your meals by emailing info at georgiesonvista.com.au. But orders must be received by 5pm on the day required. Check out our full menu and weekly specials on our website, georgiesonvista.com.au. Get behind local business and order your next takeaway dinner from Georgies on Vista. 46 City Vista Court, Fraser Rise, in the heart of Caroline Springs. Okay, welcome back and uh, thank you again to our sponsors. Uh, George is on Vista. Get your orders in for takeaway before 5 p.m. on the day and Hopheads in Altona and Point Cook. Their latest beer on their Facebook page is the Barrel Aged Narwhal Imperial Stout Aged in Kentucky Bourbon Barrels. Get over to their website to get yourself some of that if that is up your alley. Now, let's Move into question six for Joel of Sunbury United. Joel, so it's a who am I? Um, remember these five points on offer. If you get the, mm-hmm. uh, the answer correct on the first uh, first guess, I appeared for my country 74 times, scoring eight goals. I featured in three Copper Americas and two World Cup for five points. Who am I? Oh. Three Copper Americas and two World Cups. Um, nah, I'll have to need the next clue, Craig. Next clue. In 1996, I was awarded as the South American Football of the Year. I was named in the World Cup team of the tournament in 1988 for three points. At 98. Wow. Sorry, 1998. Sorry, Steve. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, just rereading it. In 1996, I was awarded as the South American Football of the Year. I was named in the World Cup team of the tournament in 1998. Oh, now. Now, we need the next clue. Next clue. After winning the league with Penaro in 2003, I moved to Valle Sarsfield, where I retired in 2004. Nah, no clue. Absolutely no clue. No clue. Final oh. for you. I was known as El Bulldog and was touted as future president of my country during my football career. Was it A, Roberto Ayala, B, Jose Luis Chilave, C, Faustino Aspria, or D, Gabriel Batistuta? Um, just um, another guess. I'm just going to go with C, Faustino Asprilla. Fastino Aspria, the ex uh, Newcastle United player, um, who I think was Colombian. Is he correct? <coughs> no, he's not. It's uh, Jose Luis Chilave, the protector of Paraguay, a goal 
uh, goal scoring goalkeeper. He represented his nation in five major tournaments. He's known to be the first goalkeeper to score a hat trick, scoring three penalties a match in in a match in Vele. Uh, Sarsfield once scored a free kick from his own half against River Plate in 1998 against Bulgaria. He became the first goalkeeper to take a direct free kick attempt on goal at a World Cup. Great question, Steve. That's tough. That's tough. (laughs) Great question, mate. He's a fascinating player. He was. Okay, well, let's go over to Anthony for his uh, Who Am I with uh, five points on on offer here if he can get it from the first one. Okay. I was born in Curry Curry, New South Wales in 1974. I began my career at Western Bears Football Club for five points. Who am I? Uh, so what's that? Six, 46 years old. Um, no, I'll need another one. Another one. I took my career to England in 1991, where I would spend the next 14 years for three points. Who am I? Harry Kuehl. Harry Kuehl is a great answer. Next question, please, Tonch. I made 23 EPL appearances, scoring three EPL goals whilst only earning one full Socceroos cap for two points. Who am I? These are brutal tonight, aren't they? On Socceroos cap. Probably couldn't name many that have 50 plus, but. <laughs> uh, another clue, please. I've got, I've got nothing. <laughs> Completely blank. I returned to Australia for the inaugural A League season, representing Newcastle Jets, followed by New Zealand Knight and Wellington Phoenix. For one point, is it A, John Phelan, B, Richard Johnson, C, Aiden Fox? Or D, Chris Coyne? Craig, you're really making me question my football knowledge tonight. I was, I was so confident coming into this. You, 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 I, you, I almost didn't, wanna... you didn't do yourself any favour scoring nine points out of ten in the last round, mate. So we, we made sure you were going to... <laughs> <laughs> that bar was set high, um, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so all I know about him is that he's been assistant manager at like ten different A-League clubs. Um, I won't go with him because I don't know the other three. Um, I'm gonna go with D. Wild stab, Chris Coyne. Um, yeah, I, I don't know Chris, to guess. No idea. Any ideas, Joel? Mm, no, I probably would have went the same. Hayden Fox. No, I probably would have went the same to be honest. Okay. These questions are so tough. <laughs> <laughs> one, yeah. one soccer roost cap, and he played that long in England. You'd think, you know, would have heard of him, but. Okay. Is he right? Is he wrong? <laughs> He's wrong. It was B. Richard Johnson, the central midfield, had uh, had a 328, uh, 28 ga- 328 game professional career, including 20 goals in 242 games for Watford. His only uh, national team cap came in 20, uh, 2000 in the Socceroos 3-1 loss to Czech Republic in Tbilisi. Craig, you've had questions about the Croatian national team. You've had questions about Serie A, AC Milan. And then tonight, it's all English football and, and ambiguous football that no one seems to have heard of. So I'm not going to say you've set me up, but <laughs> something's going on in the background there. As well, that I didn't set the questions this week, uh, Anthony. So um, you blame my co-hosts for, um, for, for the questions this week. Steve, Steve, you're killing me, Steve. To that, <laughs> uh, no comment at the moment, guys. Let's uh, instead let's move on to uh, question seven for Joel. <laughs> I feel sorry for whoever makes the final. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guess the player. Can you guess the player based on the clubs they've played for? Borussia Nunch- Neuronkirchen, Eintracht Frankfurt, Fenerbahce, PSG, Bolton, Qatar, and Hull City. Is it A. JJ Okocha? B, Stelios Janikolopoulos, C, El Haji Djouf, and D, Yuri Djokiev. Ten seconds start now. Oh, I'm going to have to say, it's another guess. I'm going to have to lock in C, El Haji Djouf. El Haji Djouf, who was an ex-Liverpool player as well, I believe. 
uh, back in the day. Um, unfortunately, Joel, <coughs> it's a wrong answer. It was the magician from Nigeria, I think he was, Steve. Um, JJ Okacha, who uh, unfortunately passed away um, a few years ago. Okacha's career saw him represent the Super Eagles 73 times, scoring 14 goals, winning the African Cup of Nations in 1994. His club's career saw him represent Bolton Wanderers 124 times and scoring 14 goals. Uh, he's still alive, mate. He's 47. He's alive. Yeah, I thought he, uh, he was going to pass away. Didn't he have some... <laughs> you sure? No, someone else. <laughs> oh, then, mate. If he's alive. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's not tuning into the show at the moment. JJ, uh, apologies if, if you are. <laughs> right, we'll move on quickly. <laughs> Uh, All that famous quote, reports of his death yeah. have been greatly exaggerated. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely correct. There'll be a statement going out after the show. Yeah, yeah I'm sure he's a regular uh, viewer absolutely. of the show. Yeah. Can you guess the player based on the clubs they've played for? Slavia Prague, Borussia Dortmund, Liverpool, Portsmouth, Aston Villa, Stoke City and Sparta Prague. Ten seconds. <laughs> I'm still laughing at that previous. <laughs> Sorry, I'm um, trying to really concentrate a little bit. Um <laughs> Dortmund. I'm going to go with uh, Hitzelsberger, maybe. Um, not Skirtle, definitely not Skirtle. Not Risa either. ALC. Um, yeah, I'll go with C, Patrick Berger. You're going with Patrick Berger. Or is it Berger? I don't know. No, it's Sorry. Yeah, Patrick Berger, the ex Czech, uh, Czech Republic player. Um, is he correct? Yes, he is. Born in Prague in 1973, the left winger's career included 28 goals in 148 appearances for Liverpool and 18 goals in 42 games for the Czech national team. He finished career at Sparta Prague in 2010. And he is, I uh, can confirm, he's still alive. He's 46 years of age. And uh, also, <laughs> Anthony is on four and Joel is on two as we go into question eight for Joel. Question eight for Joel. Have you been paying attention, Joel? Tottenham Hotspur. Yes. Tottenham Hotspur travelled to Eastern Europe, Europe for a UA, Euro, Europa League second round qualifier this week. Who did they play? Now, I'll be very, very disappointed if you didn't get this and that your old man's a Spurs fan. <laughs> oh, no, I gave it to him when, <laughs> when I heard the result. <laughs> Torpedo Zadino, C, Dinamo Brest, or D, Locomotive Plodif, Plodvid. Div. Okay, Pl I loved it. I'm pretty confident it's the locomotive plod plod div. So lock in D. You think? Yeah, well, <laughs> locked in now. No, I'm pretty confident it is. <laughs> Yeah, correct. Spurs had to come from behind with a Harry Kane 80th minute penalty and an 80th minute uh, uh, Dumbele goal to return to London with a 2 1 win. Dad wouldn't have been happy if he got that wrong, mate. Yeah, I know. When um, I told him the result, he just shook his head. He expects it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well done, Joel. You move on to three points with Anthony on four. And uh, Plovdiv, I was there in uh, 2013. Very nice little. Uh, City or town? Possibly it's possibly a town. It's that small, but very nice little neck of the woods there. Uh, Anthony's Have You Been Paying Attention question will be coming onto the screen just now. Same question for you. Serbian national captain Alexander Kolarov was on the move from Roma last week after 100 appearances from the, from the Eternal City Club. Where is his new home? Is it A, Red Star Belgrade, B, Lazio, C, Napoli, or D, your favourite team, Inter Milan? Uh, the answer is D, Inter Milan. And can I just say, I love listening to Craig pronounce Eastern European cities. Um, if if the answers have been disappointing tonight, at least we've got to enjoy that a little bit. But yeah, the answer is D, Inter Milan. I'm Welsh and I got a job to speak English, let alone English. <laughs> Fair call. Yeah. There we go. Is he correct? I'm going to give him a no, no for no, that. No, just, no, just, no, 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 no. Yes, he's correct. <laughs> The 34-year-old Kolarov joined into Milan on a reported one-year deal with an option to extend for a further fee for a fee of 1.5 million euros. 
There we go. So the 34-year-old on the move there within Serie A. Now, two questions left. Importantly, the last question is uh, there's three points on offer for each of you. In the last question, so there's still time for Joel to do Sunbury proud. I'm sure he has done the club proud. Either way, though, getting into the quarters. Now, let's go to his question, question nine. Who holds the record for the most goals scored in the dub in a W W League match? Is it A Sam Kerr, B Ashley Sykes, C Caitlin Ford, or D Kate Gill? Um, another one. I'm just going to have to have a guess out of A and C. I'm going to go A Sam Kerr. You're going to go with A Sam Kerr. <laughs> No, it's uh, unfortunately it's D. Kate Gill. Gill scored five goals against Western Sydney Wanderers for Perth Glory on the fifth of October, two thousand and fourteen. Ashley Sykes and Tara Andrews have both scored the next highest amount of four in a match, which surprises me. Though, you think Sam Kerr would uh, would be up there? Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I, to be honest, I don't watch a lot of women's football, um, but yeah, I would have thought it was um, Sam Kerr. I think she's. Um, She's at Chelsea, and Caitlin Ford is also in England as well. I think Caitlin yeah. Ford is with Arsenal, isn't she? I think Arsenal, yes. She's with Arsenal. I think she is, yes. Okay, so um, we after nine questions, uh, Joel is still two points behind, and uh, Anthony has another question to get three points in front. When Leon won the 2020 UEFA Champions League last month, who did they defeat in the final? Was it A, Barcelona? Was it B, Wolfsburg? Was it C, PSG? Or was it D, Bayern Munich? It was either Wolfsburg or PSG. One was the semi-final and one was the final. Um, I'm going to go with C, PSG. You're going to go C, PSG. Locked in. Is he correct? <coughs> no, he's not. It's VFL Wolfsburg. There we go. Leon defeated Wolfsburg 3-1 um, in San Sebastian in Spain in the 19th running of the competition. So, All right. with one question left and a possible three points uh, up for grabs, there's two points between the two teams. So, all important final question. Just before we do go on, guys. Um, the guy that actually died on the pitch is very sorry to uh, JJ Koch's uh, family. Um, his, his parents have just rung me and given me a bit of a bollocking down the phone. Uh, it was actually Mark Vivian Foey that died on the pitch. Um, and they both, uh, yeah, they both played in the UK. So do apologize for any uh, uh, JJ Koch fans or family that are listening in. There you go. Does that make you feel better, Banner? Uh, yeah, it yeah, does. It does. Thanks, mate. I appreciate it. Right, question number 10 for Joel. Joel, three World Cup players. Can you name them? For one point. Oh, the, the, guy, the, guy, the Argentinian. Oh, I don't know. The Brazilian is Cafu. Um, no, I can only name, yeah, one of them. Cafu. You can only name one. You can't name the Argentinian player. I know my dad's going to hammer me for that too because he'll know it. Um, no, legend, I've got... legend in Argentinian football. Oh, I... I don't know. Um, no, I don't. I can't even guess. Cannot, couldn't even guess. Banner? No, nah, I don't know. Don't know either the the remaining two either. Okay, so you get one point for Cafu uh, lifting. I think the two thousand and two World Cup there, Steve. I think uh, that's correct. The first one, the Argentinian, is the legend that is Mario Kempes, and the yeah, team there in seventy eight. Seventy eight, and the, uh, the 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 player on the right hand side there is Oleg Solenki. Oh, Selenko, rather, from the 1994 World Cup, which I believe was in America, wasn't it? Yeah, and the golden boot winner of that particular tournament. Yeah. Yeah. So, question number 10 for Anthony Banovac and the North Geelong, knowing that he can't lose uh, the match. Who are the three players for one point each? I believe it's Michel Platini in the middle. You'd be correct. 
Where did you get these from, Steve? I'm not even pronouncing that last one. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a lead singer out of... Uh, um, I, I expect you to try your best to uh, pronounce these three names uh, in the answers section. And uh, I'm sorry, I can't tell you who the other two are. Um, yeah, the first one I've got absolutely no idea. Um, and yeah, nah, that's it. Just Michelle Platini, sorry. Well, Michael Long has come up with an absolute clanger. He's got it. He's nailed it. So number one is Michael Prudhomme. I have no idea who he plays for. He was the uh, German uh, goalkeeper of, I think he was possibly one of the, in the team of the tournament, at least in uh, 1994. Okay. It, it's uh, not a really Ovidmar putting on a goalkeeper's kit. <laughs> and the third, uh, third player is Sami Al-Jaba in 2006. I presume he's playing for Morocco there, is he? Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, there we go. Yeah, so I think he uh, scored in four World Cups. I have to check that with Michael Long. I think he scored in four World Cups. Michael Long will come up and tell us where yeah. we'll have <laughs> be on first first man. So after question number ten, the result stands with North Geelong Warriors on six, Sunbury United on four, and North Geelong go through to the semi finals where we will have an all Croatian fine semi final with Goshbit Bears taking on North Geelong Warriors. Steve, over to you. Yes, well, thank you very much, guys. That was a really good contest. You were very good sports with some, uh, as you both pointed out, some tough questions. We were trying our best to put you through your paces and keep you on your toes, given that you both did so well in your previous encounter. Firstly, to you, Joel. Thanks very much again for uh, being on the show for the second night in a short space of time. You've done very well. Is there anyone that you wanted to say hello to who's tuning in at home? Uh, no, I'd just like to thank you guys. Thanks, Craig, um, for putting this all together. And um, I'll shout my dad out. <laughs> He's in the next room watching on his iPad. <laughs> you can't hear any banging going on in the next room. He's not cursing or no, banging. I could, I could hear him saying answers, but I couldn't hear it properly. <laughs> Mario Campus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Joel. Well, uh, yeah, uh, um, yeah. I we'll wish you a good night, and thank you very much again for your for your efforts tonight. And uh, you've you've done the the lads from Sunbury very proud. So uh, well done, Thanks, mate. Guys. And uh, all the best in your future footballing uh, horizons there at Sunbury. Thanks, guys. I appreciate yeah, it. And all the best next week, Anthony. Thanks, Joel. Appreciate it. No <laughs> worries, mate. Thanks, Joel. All the best, mate. All right, now, Anthony. Congratulations, mate. You get the uh, the prize tonight, and you're through to the semis. And now. You'll be up against Marco Butterats, and he's a very confident lad. Do you think um, he's going to try and ruffle your feathers a little bit and psych you out in the semi-final? Steve, in terms of confidence, if you asked me before today, um, I'd be up and about. But today really felt like crawling across the line as opposed to to sprinting past the finish. Um, so Butterats, um, I, I think, is a heavy favourite heading in. Um, he'll be, yeah, he'll be full of confidence. Um, and I'm just going to spend the next couple of weeks studying and, and hope not to embarrass myself like I did today. <laughs> well, the good thing is, uh, Banny, you've won a $50 voucher from Hopheads, and I will be passing that on to Morgan to uh, to give to you next time he sees you. So you're clearly not going to get that. So um, so I'll probably email to you later on in the week, mate. Craig, I think I think Morgan's on a, on a really strict diet, actually. Um, he's been sending me photos of, of his uh, biceps. You know, it's a, he's got a bit of a lockdown body happening. Um, so he might actually make it make it to me, as opposed to perhaps this time last year. Well, not not looking like what he had to eat tonight, which was a Palmer and chips and a uh, and a ten inch pizza, mate. There's no chance of him. That must be somebody <laughs> else's body. He must have been his cheat day. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, well done, Anthony. Great performance again, mate. I know that uh, questions were tough, and um, you can blame uh, the guy above you uh, for for posting those questions today. But they were they were really tough ones. But uh, you did really well, mate. So well done, and we'll look forward to catching up with you in a few weeks' time. Thanks, Steve. Uh, see you soon. Thanks, Bye -bye. Thanks Anthony. All right, that is it for the second quarter final. As we get Tonchi back on the screen, he's done some good work behind the scenes yeah. there to make no, it all happen. No, so. no, no, no. Do not deflect all the attention away from you, Steve Curtin. Craig, I think you'll agree with me. They were absolutely brilliant, those questions this week. This week's quiz master, Steve Curtin. Yeah, they were horrible tonight. Man. <laughs> I was glad I wasn't the one answering them. I probably, even though it takes a long time, I probably prefer oh, yeah. writing, them, writing them than asking them or answering them. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. No, 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 they were brutal. Absolutely brutal. Yeah, we do have a special guest uh, uh, um, 
question master, uh, or not question master, but... Um, say it again. What was that again? How do you say question it Question master. Question master. <laughs> <laughs> He's coined a new phrase. I, yeah. think, I think Anthony Banovitz and Joel Gresh, they're, the only, they're not the only ones whose brain has been fried tonight, yeah. Craig. Yeah. Quiz master. Quiz master. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Craig's had a hot day out in the sun. He's done very well. He has. It's been it's a bit of sun sunstroke, yeah? Yeah. I actually, I've, I've been coaching today and... Um, I was sat under the, sat at the table here and I had cramp in my calf and it was killing me. And I was actually at one point going to get up and chuck my headphones on. And start <laughs> cramp, and cramp I, the I managed to get through it as a trooper I am. But um, yes, Michael Long has put together the uh, the next set of questions uh, for um, for Thursday's uh, contestants. Yeah, so we can. Michael's questions. Big thanks to uh, to Michael for putting them together for us. He's uh, he always listens in every week and he always gets the um, the answers. Um, uh, uh, correct, or in most instances, he does. And uh, I'm just looking now, Michael. You don't need to keep saying that JJ died. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's going to end up being a T-shirt about this moment. I reckon. I reckon, so, like I reckon <laughs> too. I reckon too. JJ Filer. You can see Michael on getting around town, sporting that T-shirt next season at yeah. NPL games and stuff. Oh goodness me, that's a classic. Anyway, gents, let's quickly before we finish up, let's go through the um the fixtures as we saw. Gorsebridge Bears last Thursday defeated Bowen. 10-8, um, and North Geelong tonight were the 6-4 winners over Sunbury United. So all Croatian semi-final clash between Gorspich and North Geelong. But all our attention now turns to some Thursday night Brimbank Stallions taking on St. Albans Saints in the big Western Suburbs derby. Should be an absolute perler. And then this time next week, um, the final game of the uh, of the quarterfinals sees Sebastopol Vikings from Ballarat taking on Yarraville glory um, should be absolutely fantastic, guys. That's correct. And just quickly as well, that first semi is now locked in. The 1st of October, the Thursday night, it is uh, Marco Butarats of Gospic Bears against Anthony Banovats of North Geelong Warriors, the all-Croatian derby semi-final fixture. Should be a good one. All right, gents. Well, on that note, thank you very much for being a part of tonight's show. We thank look you. forward to our, to our Thursday night. Look forward to it, guys. I'm off to JJ Koch's funeral. I'll see you. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Good, good, good night, all, and thank you very much for being a part of this show once again. We do urge you to become a member of this show. We certainly, um, um, we, 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 we do need your support. We do need your backing. So um, there's, there is all the details. If you would like to become a member of the show, even though um, the season will finish up very, very shortly, we'll be getting ready and for a bigger and better 2021. But in the meantime, we do need you guys to support this show. We got need you guys to support this concept. Become a member by going on www.patreon.com forward slash football outwear show. Until um, Thursday night, on behalf of Steve Curtin, Craig Filer, I should say JJ Filer, and myself, Tonchi Prusak, it has been an absolute pleasure. Good night. The best beer store in the West, with two stores at Shop 2, number 13, Adelphi Boulevard, Point Cook, and 78 Pier Street, Altona. Hopheads offers one of the widest selection of local and international craft beer in Victoria. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hopheads.